Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 20, titled Gone Rogue. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Alright, so this episode was good. I actually really kind of liked it quite a lot, but saying that, nothing really happened too much in this episode. I found it was very entertaining, we had some nice pair-ups with the characters, but nothing really massive went on in terms of story, it was sort of just like adding in the rogues, and the most interesting thing was probably Nora being evil in this episode, so let's talk about it. Nora at the start of the episode needs a team, she needs help due to, she wants to get something essentially, she wants to pull off a heist, and this is a major part of the story throughout the entire episode. And we see Team Flash, and they are obviously looking after what happened last episode. They're looking for Nora because Thorne said Nora's back in 2019, but he doesn't know where. So she's on a mission for Thorne to get this weapon. So the weapon is actually able to actually kill any meta or disintegrate anyone, basically. And it will essentially be like meta tech. So she will be able to not kill Cicada. She's not trying to do that. She's trying to destroy the dagger. As Thorn has said many times this season, that is their plan. It's not to kill Cicada, it's to stop and destroy the dagger. We don't know why yet, but that's going to be explained very soon. And Cisco is back in this episode. He has a blast. And I thought it was just such a nice experience having Sherlock and Cisco teaming up because when those two are together, whether it's Tom Kavanagh playing any other character, they always have that connection and we had some great callbacks, there was that video with Reverse Flash and Cisco when Cisco pulls the trick. Just some really nice moments in this episode with Cisco, so it's nice to see that he's back around at least for this episode, maybe the next couple of ones as we head towards the end of the season. We've only got two more episodes after this, so I guess it's a bit of a letdown that there wasn't too much going into the finale and what's going to be happening, but at least we got the negative Speed Force stuff. So let's move on to talk about the negative Speed Force stuff in this episode. So there was negative tachyons nearer to the start of the episode. They find it at this crime scene of sorts and they realize it's Nora. And at that point they realize she's not using the Speed Force. She is using the negative Speed Force. She is using negative tachyons, which is revealed to actually be siphoning off from normal tachyon so the negative speed force is essentially taken away and siphoning from the speed force and that's how reverse flash gets his speed and that's how nora's been getting her speed in this new iteration of her with you know her red lightning and that's a sort of backlash of being part of the negative speed force so it overtakes her the anger really really shows throughout this episode but Obviously, last episode was the best example of it when she freaked out and she ran. She's going through the negative speed force and she comes out with the glowing eyes. The glowing eyes came back a couple of times in this episode. So, in regards to negative speed force and how they did it, it was a little bit of a letdown because it was just so minor. It wasn't a main focus. I wanted it to be a main focus, but obviously, it, it can't always go your way. And they didn't really end up using it that much and it wasn't as exciting as it was last episode especially with that massive reveal that she is able to tap into it and that amazing ending scene paralleling her to reverse flash i was a little bit upset that she wasn't as evil i was expecting her to be more evil but then i saw the trailer and i was like okay maybe this is just the way that they're gonna do it so a little bit of a letdown but i just really did actually enjoy the moments of the negative speed force in this episode with Nora, but I just don't think there was enough. Alright, so let's move on to talk about the next bit. So we have the young rogues. So we have Queen Bee, Weather Witch, and Ragdoll, along with Nora, who they are all teaming up together in this episode. And they quote themselves as, or they call themselves the young rogues, and they're cut off. But yeah, I'm not so sure about them. I thought. Queen B was very, very average. I thought Weather Witch was alright, and I thought Ragdoll was good, but, you know, he didn't have a very big role to play. So I thought they were just kind of a little bit underwhelming, 
but I thought what really worked about the team up was Nora. Nora being bad was amazing. It was so much fun seeing Jessica actually playing this sort of bad version of Nora while she's doing the wrong things for the right reasons and that is sort of a big part of this episode and how it all went on. So again, young rogues can't live up to Captain Cold, Heat Wave and Weather Wizard, you know, they're the OGs and I think they're actually really good actors and I find that some of the younger rogue actors or the metas of the week that come in the actors aren't as good and that is just a blunt fact and I think that's why they took Wentworth Miller and brought him onto Legends because he's such a great actor playing that role that he deserved more and I don't think this version of the Rogues is the best that they could have done and yeah I'm not so sure about them but like I said bits of it worked mainly because of Nora. Just a quick thing, and I may be sounding like I'm a little bit negative, but I actually really enjoyed this episode. But I'm still wondering why Cecile still has her powers, because they explained that last season that it was when she was pregnant, and she had her baby at the end of last season, and that's nearly been a year. That's been like, I don't know, eight months or something, so... No idea, I think that's a definite plot hole and I think they need to get rid of her powers because it's a little bit annoying. I'm not too bothered like I was last season because last season it was just used for comedy and it was very cringy. But it's a little bit better this season but I still don't understand why she has powers still because it was supposed to be to do with her pregnancy. Okay, so Iris in this episode, she at one point gets to talk about Nora and 2049 to Cecile and that sort of sparks the conversations that they have later in the episode and so at one point we get Cisco and Sherlock being kidnapped by Ragdoll and Weather Witch and we have Nora essentially facing off against Cisco and Sherlock and Cisco's laughing and it was such a great moment because you know Nora's been working with them the whole time she kidnaps them and Cisco's like ha yeah this has happened many times you just want me for my tech stuff, I'm not gonna do it. And then she full on threatens to phase through his chest with her red eyes and I was like, holy shit. And Cisco was getting flashbacks, I'm for sure, with reverse flash. So that was a great moment in the episode. And so at one point just prior to that, just prior to when Nora is actually facing off against Cisco, we have Nora and Barry. And so they meet up for the first time since that moment and she says, you given up on me again. And then Nora's face starts phasing and she's shaking and her eyes turn red and her lightning surges off of her, her red lightning. Barry at that moment finds out about her having the negative speed force and it manipulates her lightning. And wow, what a great moment. I loved the anger, literally made her phase without noticing. Her eyes turn red and her lightning surges off and Barry's flung back. So, another really great moment. I thought there were some really great moments in this episode. Although, like I said, there wasn't like a massive relevance of this episode. If you compare it to, say, last episode where we had all the reverse Flash and Nora stuff. And the recent Nora origin story with the Godspeed episode. Alright, so let's move on. So, at one point in the episode, Barry wants to bring her in. He's going full on. He's like, no, she's being a criminal. She's doing all this illegal stuff. We have to deal with her and so Barry and Iris are back at it fighting again and Thorne needs Nora is a question that Iris asks and so Iris believes Thorne maybe could have changed and what if Thorne is trying to redeem himself? Barry is very confused. I think he sort of understands what Iris is saying but at the same time we know that he's manipulated Nora. We know that at the end of the season he's going to face off against Barry and he always has malicious intent. So Iris is looking to the bright side. She's looking at maybe how, because she believes that Thorne actually cares for Nora, that he's not doing anything too malicious. And she sort of agrees with him of sorts of, you know, whatever his plan is. She's not very worried about Nora. She doesn't think that it's so urgent to bring her in because, you know, she has some sort of control. But again, I sort of am right in the middle between their fight. 
I thought Barry made a lot of really great points, like how you cannot trust Thorn because you can't trust Thorn, but also Iris had a point with how, you know, maybe Thorn could be good, you know, he could actually have good intent this time, although obviously he's definitely not really, but yeah, so I'm a little bit split on that, I've been split the last few episodes, but I really like that moment, I thought it was a really good moment, and so we get a Jenny Ognatz reference for her fake name, for Nora's fake name, so that's XS in the comics, so that was a very nice shout out, and so we have at one point Ragdoll actually doing some disgusting thing, like when he contorts his body and he goes up a pipe, like whether which said it all, oh, that is pretty sickly. So it seems like he's like a full on mutant. I don't know. It's crazy. But anyway, so like I said, I think there was some really nice pairings in this episode. We had some brief moments with Caitlyn and Ralph. We had that funny moment where Ralph thinks Caitlyn's into him. That was a nice moment. I really liked that. But then I thought the standout was definitely Cisco and Sherlock together. Like I mentioned prior, it's just such a good experience and we always have great moments when those two actors are working together and so let's move on to the next bit and so Nora nearer to the end of the episode she's not going to continue to use Thorne's plan and this is by the time that everything is back to normal and Barry and her are on good terms and this is after Nora getting betrayed and Barry walks into this place into the warehouse and he looks like he's drunk and he's like I'm here and it was just such a great moment, like Grant totally killed it when he was pretending to be Sherlock and we get the reveal at Sherlock and then Barry, Iris and Joe come out of nowhere, they use the devices with the face changer, I forgot what it was called, and they have guns and they look super cool just saying with those glasses, so I really really liked that moment, that was really funny because you were like, huh, is Barry actually drunk? What's happening? Barry doesn't only get drunk, he can't really do that. So that was a great moment, a great reveal, and so Joe actually gets some time in this episode. He's fighting, we haven't seen him fight in a long time, so that was kind of nice to see. So, like I said, everything's back to normal with Nora and Barry by the end of this episode. They're back together again, and so they're fighting together, and Nora's lightning is back to normal. She has the yellow and purple lightning, and at one point it actually looked like Barry had red lightning, like he took it off of her or something, so that's very interesting. Don't know if my eyes are going crazy, but it seemed like at one point, maybe he had that lightning. Maybe that'll come back to bite him in the butt sometime later this season. I'm not sure. But, yeah, it seems like everything's back to normal. So, Nora's not going to use Thorne's plan. But then, Barry says, it's a good idea. So, Barry is sort of going back on what he said before. And I think it's definitely because of Iris talking to him. And he sort of thought about it and his head has wrapped around it maybe this is a good idea although it's definitely somehow going to play into what Thorne wants to happen by the end of the season and then at the end of the episode we get the reveal that <clears throat> Cicada 2 is actually creating this metahuman weaponized version of the cure and she's going to send it out and kill everyone it's a pretty basic superhero super villain plan sorry so yeah not too much happened in this episode, but there were some really good moments, like I said. I really did enjoy it overall, so I'm not so sure about the new rogues, but everything else, very, very good. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.